I'm old. <laughs> I'm Johnson. You had to sell stock to that woman. How did I know she was the district attorney's wife? Expect her to wear a badge? Well, I stole the sheriff and he wore one. Will you hurry up before the law gets here? This is no time to be washing your hands. Well, you said you wanted to make a clean getaway, didn't you? and get your hands nice and clean. We don't want to get the jail dirty. Out of 123 million people I had to pick you as a partner. They don't answer. What are you doing now? A, B, C, C, D, Q, F. Go back to your room and get those bonds out of there. We're leaving no evidence behind. These babies don't make us a fortune yet. Those bonds won't be good in 15 million years. What? Those bonds won't be good in 15 million years. Boy, <laughs> you scared me for a minute. I thought you said 50 million years. Maybe I better answer. It might not be for us. The Consolidated Gold Mining Corporation. Now, listen, Chubby, you can't fool me. I recognize your voice. It's Curdy. Dirty, I thought you fired that dame. I did this morning. What's the matter? She want her money? Worse than that, she wants ours. And that check you gave me for my salary last week, it came back from the bank, Mark. No funds. No funds? <laughs> That's funny. A big bank like that certainly ought to have some money in it. Well, it's not plenty of money, but it hasn't any of yours. Come on. We got to get out of here. Chubby, you can't run out on me. What did you say? Wait a minute, Gertie. How long have you been working for me? About two years. Well, whose word are you going to take? The banks or mine? Come on, Charlie. This is one stockholders meeting I don't want to attend. But, J.D., we can't leave Gertie lying here on the floor. Wait till I get my geology tools. It's a dog. I know it's a dog, but what's he doing in our car? I guess he just liked the looks of it and jumped in and sat down. Well, he certainly did a fine job tying himself to that steering wheel. <laughs> You're not scared of him, are you? <laughs> oh, no. You get right in. I'll sit in the back. <laughs> Gertie! What are you doing here? Where are you boys going? Oh, Springfield. <laughs> What difference does that make? We've got business everywhere. Oh. Throw the dog out, Charlie. Oh, don't be afraid. 
Haven't you heard the old saying that a barking dog never bites? I have heard it, but has the dog heard it? Give him the car. Let's beat it. Oh, leave him to me. He's a one-man dog. I thought he was a one-man dog. He is, but I guess I'm not the right man. What'd I ever do to you? <laughs> Snuffy, stop teasing, Snuffy. <laughs> oh, baby, come on back here with Mommy. Come on. Hey, help him over. He's such a little baby. I'm come a... on, honey. Come on. Dog and a dame, as if we're not having enough trouble already. From now on, I'll go my way and you'll go yours. Well, I'd rather go your way. Look, Charlie, the longer we're together, the more trouble we're going to get into. That's why I think it's best we split. Split? Did Damon leave Pythias? No. Did Mark Anthony leave Cleopatra? No. Did Sears leave Roebuck? No. Did Beans leave Boston? Did Beans leave Boston? No. Then why should you leave me? Because I want to settle down and be a respectable citizen. Instead of living in an overnight bag, I'm through with the old life. You can't do this to me. After all we've been through together, it would be the height of selfishness, the pinnacle of inconsideration, and the apex of ingratitude. <laughs> Charlie, this will be our last meal together for some time. Well, you better take these bonds. You may need them to get started. Ah, uh, come on. Hey, what about Gertie? Shall I wake her? I'll nah, let her sleep. Maybe you're right. We don't have to pay her while she's sleeping. Now, we don't owe her a thing. She hasn't been awake since we met her. A sirloin. I'll have the same. Okay, two steaks. And make mine tender. One tender. Vicious? Vicious? <laughs> yes, he vicious the other steak, too. Hello, son. What is this, a minute steak? No, a minute steak take a half hour. How much your club steaks, Chuck? 60 cents, Billy. Gee, that's pretty high. Pretty tough when you have to pay 60 cents for a steak, isn't it? Sure, but it's tougher when you only pay 25. Pay me next time, Billy. There won't be any next time. I'm on my way to New York. New York? Boy, what a town that was before they doubled the police force. And what are you going to do in New York? I'm going to be a big newspaper man. A newspaper man, huh? Here's one of my cards. Yeah, assistant circulation manager, huh? Sylvia, I woke up. Well, let me be the first... First one to congratulate you. I just had a steak. Will you have a donut? Oh, no, thanks. I just dreamt I ate dinner and I'm so full. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you go back to sleep and wait for your dessert? Mm, I hope it's chocolate pudding. <laughs> hope it's chocolate pudding. Hope it's chocolate pudding. Why should a man of your importance leave his hometown? Ah, uh, Chesterville ain't big enough for me. There's no future there. Don't say that, Billy. That bonus money will make things hum. What bonus money? Soldiers home in town. Over a thousand veterans. Yeah, they just collected almost a half a million dollars. <coughs> Keep the change. Thanks. 
There must be plenty of opportunity in a small town. I haven't seen any. Ah, uh, you may be turning your back on the greatest opportunity you'll ever have. See? That was his opportunity and he walked right away from it. Pick them up, Billy. They're all yours. Hey, Charlie. I changed my mind. About going straight? No, about the car. I need it. Thanks for the steak, mister. That's okay, Billy. Can we give you a lift? Are you going my way? Sure. Get right in. I'll take care of your bicycle. Okay. Oh. Wait a minute. The pedal's in my pocket. I'll get it in the car. Don't worry. I wish the next fat thing you ride, you'll ride a kitty car. Get the... Gee, what a swell dog. Does he pet? Does he pet? <laughs> you should have seen him necking me this morning. doing 30? You're under arrest. Why, officer, what for? Kidnapping. Kidnapping? Kidnapping. Kidnapping. Just come clean and tell me who was in that kidnapping with you. Say, hey, listen, officer, there was no kidnapping. We met this little fellow who was running away from home. We gave him a lift in our car. We were taking him back to his mother. That's all there was to it. No, you won't talk, huh? What we want is a confession. Now, you come clean, or I'll put this bullet right through your heart. Up here. Listen, we've got nothing to confess. We're innocent. Shut up. I'll give you one more chance. If you don't confess before I count to three, I'll empty this gun into you. One. But I didn't do anything. Two. You're killing an innocent man. Three. They got me, J.D. If you can't get a confession out of that guy, I'll get one out of this bird. I'll make him talk. Where were you on the night of June the 10th? I was out with a beautiful blonde. Where were you on the night of June the 11th? I was out with a beautiful brunette. Where were you on the night of the 12th? I was out with a beautiful redhead. Keep it up, Harry. We're getting somewhere. He's confessing. He's not confessing. He's just bragging. But I'm not going to stand here and waste my good breath on you. Somebody's been kidding you, officer. Let's give him the third degree. You mean to tell me we only have the second one up till now? Get on your feet. No, thanks. I think I'll sit this one out. I'll hammer you to your black and blue. But you afraid you'll hurt your fists? You're lucky I'm using my fists. Once I knock the guy's block off of the golf club. Then how many strokes? You wouldn't hit a man with glasses, would you? Put those glasses away. Now sit down. I'll smack you so hard you spin around in that chair for three days. Ah, comes the revolution again. We'll get the tooth out of you fellows that take the rest of our lives. There are other ways besides the third degree, you know. Yeah, ever hear of a thing called a lie detector? Have I heard of it? <laughs> I was married to one for eight years. Come on, Harry. You needn't try to escape because I'm just as handy with my gun as I am with my fist. He's a crack shot. Once during a jailbreak, he killed four escaping prisoners. I hollered at the men to halt, but they wouldn't, so I fired. And a prisoner bit the dust. I fired again, and another prisoner bit the dust. I fired again, and the third prisoner bit the dust. They were biting pretty good that day. Hamilton, William? Well, get your jaw ready. Here comes the night shift. Gentlemen, I'm a lawyer. I think I can get you damaged. We've got enough damages. What we want now is repairs. So much of my business is done in this jail, the chief allows me to carry my own key. It's a good idea, J.D. Remind me to have a key made. Have some trouble? No, thanks. We just had some. Been in a fight? Huh? Been in a fight? No. Somebody left the window open and we were attacked by a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a lawyer, huh? 
I am. <laughs> You'll excuse us for not knowing it. Sure. But you're the first lawyer we ever saw that had his hands in his own pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Boys married? No. <laughs> this is the worst thing that ever happened to us. <laughs> well, tell me just what happened. Well, first of all, we were arrested on the mistaken charge of kidnapping. And then a couple of officers takes us down to this cell and starts to get rough with us. They didn't do you any bodily harm, did they? Did they? One of them comes up behind me, clips me over the air, and sends me spinning around the chair like that. He didn't do that, did he? Yeah, sure. Then the officer that has me jabs Charlie in the ribs with a gun just like that. And then he sucked me in the jaw like that. Yes, and then the officer comes up to me and he hits me so hard with his fist that he knocks me right back onto the bed. I ask you, do you call that justice? Well, will you look at that? He's not even interested. Sleeping while we're talking to him. It would serve him right if we got another lawyer. Hello. What? Just a moment. It's for you. Thank you, Mr. I'll release them at once. Bring in Hamilton and Williams. Yes, sir. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> we thought this was the way out. Come in, gentlemen. Be bashful. This is Miss Teeth, Billy's mother. <laughs> she told me that you were only trying to bring the boy back home. Billy didn't realize that you might actually be taken for criminals. <laughs> Ridiculous. Nobody could ever make that mistake. Oh, now, please don't be concerned. We were delighted to be of service. Well, I'm very grateful to you. You see, Billy's been a great comfort to me since we lost his daddy. <laughs> well, a fine little fellow like Billy should have a father. That bond won't merely make you wealthy, but it'll make you a fortune. But remember, I'm doing this as a special favor to you. So don't tell anyone. I'm not mentioning it to us, though. Well, let's all go to the hotel. I want you to be my guest. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keith. Come. Let's be on our way. To the bonus money. How do you like our little city? <laughs> it's a lovely, fat little town. I know I'm going to like Chesterville very much. I hope so. Is that a soldier? Well, of course. Can you imagine wasting good money on cigars? He ought to be court martialed. <laughs> It was too good to last. Uh, who's the Susie? Oh! Stop trucking. Meet Mrs. Eve. This is Gertie, our secretary. How do you do? Hello. Oh, Snappy, come here and shake hands with Mrs. Eve. Yeah, come on, baby. Come on, shake hands with Mrs. Eve. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. What a lovely dog. Have you raised him from a pup? Certainly. <laughs> What else could you raise a dog from? <laughs> Personally, I prefer lap dogs. Oh, Snuffy's too bashful. He never lets anybody sit in his lap. <laughs> Gertie has such a subtle sense of humor. I'll go see about your room. I know you must be very tired after such a trying morning. Yeah. <laughs> I never was so close to being tried in all my life. We'll be delighted to accept your hospitality, Mrs. Eve. How did you get here? Well, an Indian gave me a ride. An Indian? That's what it said on the side of the motorcycle. You ought to be wearing that collar instead of Snuffy. Oh, I tried it once, but it was too big. It's like an ordinary bond, my dear. Ordinary bonds pay interest. There's no telling what this bond may pay. And I'm not putting it on the market right now. Pardon me, I have to say goodbye to Mr. Whitney. Just a moment. 
Well, goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, I think it's for the best, don't you? Well, it's a tough way to part, but I guess it's the only way out of it. I hope you like it there. There? I'm going to stay here. A lot of money lying around. Easy money. You do want to stay on us, don't you? You'll never do it. You can't. It would be the acme of impossibility. Move on, J.D. Save your soul. Charlie, I told you to drop me at the nearest railroad station. This is it. Your car is out in front. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, J.D. Robbie, where are you going? Heaven only knows. Well, I guess that's as good a place as any. Frost happy. We're going to heaven. Wouldn't you like some lunch? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. Pardon me, Mother. Yes, dear. Mr. Martin wants to see you. Oh, well, tell him I'll be right there. Okay. Mr. Martin wants to buy some property I own. I don't know why. It isn't worth anything. It's near the soldier's home. The boys use it for a ball field. Well, if he wants it, then it's valuable to him. You know, I'm sort of a salesman myself. Maybe I can help you. Well, that would be nice of you. Come on. Mr. Martin, this is Mr. Hamilton. I understand you're looking at some property I'm interested in. I thought I'd buy it if the price is right. I'll give you $1,500 for it. Oh, well, that's a very good offer. I'll give you $1,750. $2,000. Twenty-five hundred. Three thousand. Thirty-two fifty. I'll give you thirty-five hundred dollars. Oh, well, I... Four thousand dollars in cash. Who are you? I'm Mr. Hamilton's partner, and he's my partner. That's the way we are, partners now and forever. Yeah, one for one and all for all. I mean, all for all and Gertie, one for one. don't mix in big business. Go outside and take Gertie or Snuffy with you. Bye. Well, you partners own it. I don't know how to thank you. When J.D. and I want a thing, it's all over but the congratulations. <laughs> Isn't that right, J.D.? Uh, I'm so indebted to you both. Well, really, you know, it was nothing, Mrs. Heath. Well, it's we... a lot to me just now. $4,000 and in cash. Yes. Indeed. And my check is practically cash. Only cash is cash. Right you are, partner. Here's my $2,000, Mr. P. My partner will pay the rest. Go on, and pay her. There you are. I'll get you a receipt. I thought I told you to get out of town. You did, but you didn't tell me to stay out. Well, what did you have to make that bid for? I thought I was doing you a favor, J.D. Yes, and I was only trying to help Mrs. Heath. Now we're hooked $4,000 worth. What do we buy? Why did you let them outbid you? Now we'll have to buy the Allen property at twice the price we'd have paid for Mrs. Heath's place. I only did what you told me, Mr. Grayson. You said 3500 was our top price. You might have used your brains. You know that if we're going to build a gambling casino, it has to be as near the soldier's home as possible. What do you suppose they want it for? Do you think they're after the bonus money, too? I don't know who they are or what they're up to, but I'll soon find out. What did you say their names are? Hamilton and Williams. Oh, Hamilton and Williams. Where are your other trousers? Being pressed. Well, J.D., you're back in my bag. That's right. You're going away. I can't leave now. I'm a property owner. The taxes will soon be due, and what will people say if I run away? A property owner, $4,000 for a bacon lot, and all it's good for is a baseball field. I've got it. We can charge admission to the ball game. I'm going to get rid of this property for anything it'll bring, and then I'm going to get rid of you. 
Yeah, I fooled you that time. Gertie! Oh, Martin comes to lunch at 12.30. Mrs. Heath says so. Martin's our customer. We'll take a loss and get rid of all encumbrances. Now, see, you should get rid of your circumferences, too. <laughs> I'm glad you happened in. We were just talking about you. Yeah, what a swell fellow you are. It's about that property we bought yesterday. Now, now Mr. Martin, Martin, we, we were, were thinking... thinking... Your partner's all right. No, really, we've been unfair to you. It's not right that a couple of strangers should come in town and take a choice piece of property away from one of the townspeople. A splendid piece of property, increasing in value daily, beautifully situated and sought after by many investors. Maybe we better not sell it. Sell it? Yes. We're going to let you have it at your last figure, $3,500. But I don't want it. It's the same property you wanted yesterday. We'll make you a price of $3,000. $2,500. $2,000. $1,500. The gentleman on my right here says $1,500. Going, going. Do I hear a thousand? Do I hear a thousand? Get away from me, boy. Shabala me. $1,000. Did you say a thousand? <laughs> the price is $1,000. Going to the thousand. Going to the thousand. What do you say, Mr. Martin? Are you gamblers? Sure. Of course. I just bought the Allen property across from yours. I'm building a gambling casino. Drop in sometime. Maybe you can win your $4,000 back. A gambling casino, the dirty crook. He's after that bonus money. Yes, we'll serve him right if we went out and got it ourselves. We'll do nothing of the kind. Calling Mr. Cash. Who are you looking for? Cash. Tom Cash. Oh, well, then Snuffy will help you look. If there's any cats in this hotel, he'll find them. <laughs> I really like Chesterville. And you know what impresses me most is the charm of its people. Oh, what could a town like this hold for a man like you? Well, you know, I've always wanted to be a country gentleman. Oh, Mr. And... Hamilton, just a minute. Thanks for the order. And I'll have both those trucks up to your place in the morning. Thank you very kindly. Brooke, evidently you're going to be a very active country gentleman. Yeah, well, you see, I, I, I just bought a farm. You did? Hello, yeah. Mrs. Heath. Oh, Hello, Mr. Hamilton. We just wired for that carload of lumber. Lumber? Yes, your secretary phoned in the order. Thanks very much. I'll be around to see you when I have a little more time. Goodbye, Miss Heath. Oh, Jerome, this is wonderful. When are you starting to build? Well, I, I haven't decided just as yet, but... Oh, uh, Mr. Hamilton. Uh, that, uh, order of, uh... That's kid. all right. Don't mention it. Jerome! This is a surprise. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I... <laughs> I, I was just going to, but... You, you stay here just a moment and I'll be right back. Yes, but you promised to deliver the couch and chairs this morning. What? And they should be here any minute. If you see that secretary, mind send her right back to the office. What's the meaning of all this? I'll be with you in a second. Hello. 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 Thanks. Hello. Hamilton Williams Incorporated. J.D. Hamilton speaking. What? I never ordered any such thing. If I did, you didn't send it. If you sent it, I didn't get it. If I got it, I paid for it. If I didn't, I won't. What's the idea of using my name? What's the matter with your name? You're not ashamed of it, are you? Why don't you put your shoes on? What, scratch the disc? What's all this stuff? <laughs> well, uh, this is a filing cabinet. There's a safe, and this is a wastebasket. I'd like to know what this is all about. Well, I'll tell you, J.D., we're in the Earl business. Earl business? Yes. O-I-L. Earl. And you expect me to go into this business with you? <laughs> You're already in it. You're the president. Listen up. I don't know anything about this business. That's just why you'll make a good president. Hamilton and Williams? Yes? You can't get me mixed up in anything like this. 
sign here, please. I'm telling you right now, Charlie, I'm having nothing to do with this business. Now, don't be so hasty in your judgment, J.C. Look at this. What's that? I found it on our property. For years, it was second base on the Chesterfield baseball field. But nobody knew it until they discovered it. What, second base? No, it's oil. Black gold, J.D. Oil shale. Where you find this rock, there's oil. Where you find oil, there's this rock. You can ask any geologist. I will. Then go ahead and ask me. Where do you want this couch? Over there, alongside the wall. A fine geologist you are. You don't even know where this rock originally came from. Thousands of years ago, the glaciers brought that down. The glaciers? Where are the glaciers now? They've gone back for more rocks. Gertie! You should have been here two hours ago. Why? What happened? Oh, I'm washing my hands of this whole affair. You and your money-making schemes. First, you get a gold mine. It's going to be a bonanza. Then you discover oil. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of bonanza oil to me, too. Gertie, answer that phone. If it's for me, I'm out. Hamilton and, uh, Hamilton and... Hamilton and Williams Incorporated. Hamilton and Williams Corrupted. All of our supply company calling Mr. Williams. He's not in. Well, of course I'm sure. You don't doubt his word, do you? What's that? I guess the department won't ship the order until it's paid for. Cancel the order. We can't wait that long. Bye. And this is the kind of a racket you wanted me to go into? Don't be J.D. We'll make a fortune. Listen, Charlie, why don't you stop this crooked business and go straight? Go straight? What, and land in jail again? You realize how much it costs to sink a well? Don't let that worry you. I can sell enough stock in two days to take care of that. No, I'm through with the whole thing. Take my name off of everything. But this is a perfectly legitimate business, I tell you, J.D. Chubby, can you fix this? Radio must be busted. I can't get any music on it. Gertie, why don't you get some brains? Oh, what station are they on? Listen, Gertie, can't you hear I'm talking to Mr. Hamilton? Oh, well, I didn't know you wanted me to listen. J.D., wait a minute. There's nothing to wait for. I'm through. And you won't be my partner? No. Positively and definitely no. Oh, Miss Alford. I'm glad you feel that way about it, my dear. Oh, I'm so glad about it. Until today, I couldn't make myself believe you'd really stay in Chesterfield. Well, I'm glad you feel that way about it. Oh, you've used such excellent taste in everything you've bought. Yes. J.D. has good taste. <laughs> Haven't I? This furniture must have been frightfully expensive. Nothing but the best. Why not? When well, you don't intend paying for the stuff, it's just cheap to buy expensive things and it's just to buy cheap ones. <laughs> Gertie will have her little joke. <laughs> Hamilton and Williams Incorporated. And Mr. Hamilton is the president. What business are you in? Earl. Oil. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Gertie, get up and let the lady sit down. Since we found oil on the land you sold us, uh, Mr. Hamilton and I have decided to give you the opportunity to participate in the profits. So we have made you vice president. Oh, Jerome, how thoughtful of you. I'll be the envy of everyone in Chesterville. And tomorrow we're going to have an artist make an oil painting of you to hang on our wall here. This is the first time I've ever been done in oil. Me too. We'll have to do something about Hamilton and Williams. I'll take care of them as soon as they begin to interfere with us. They're interfering right now. The whole town's begging to get in on that proposition. I tell you, Mr. Grayson, they'll have every dime in Chesterville if we don't stop them. I don't trust those fellows any more than you do. But until I'm sure there's no oil in that well, I'm... Yes? Send him right in. I think we'll learn something right now. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello, Briggs. Well, what does it look like? Oh, I don't know yet. I'll have a better idea when we get 2,000 feet. I don't have to wait that long to tell you it's a pony. Well, personally, I don't think there's oil within 100 miles of here. I don't care what you think. You've got to be sure. That's what I'm paying you for. Don't worry. If you're thinking of investing, you'll know if there's oil there before anyone else. I'm relying on you, Dick. Look at these. 
Bill, Bill, and more Bill. Bill? <laughs> There's nothing to worry about, J.D. We ought to hit oil any day now. We're already down to 1865 feet. We're down to $18.65. Hardly enough to bail us out of jail. Lucky for us, I made Mrs. Heath vice president of the company. I'll tell you that. What have you been up to now? If you bother her, I'll... I didn't do anything, J.D., but those guys said if we didn't pay them off in 24 hours, they were going to hold Mrs. Heath responsible. A fine kettle of fish you cooked up. I never cooked any fish. All my life I wanted to meet a woman like her, and now you've ruined it. But, J.D., if you'll only let me unload some stock on the soldiers, we can make plenty of money. I won't do it, Charlie. We won't have a thing to do with a bit of that bonus. Now, part. don't be a snob, J.D. If it's good enough for Grayson and Martin, it ought to be good enough for us. Grayson, what are you talking about? He's the big works. Martin's just the front. Oh, so that's why he's been giving us all this trouble. He's afraid we'll take that bonus money away from him. Well, listen, I'm going to get Louise out of this if it's the last thing I do. But, J.D., if you'll only... Get out of here. Again. I'm a detective. Here's one of my cards. I know what's worrying you. You have no oil in your well. Who told you that? I heard Mr. Briggs tell to Mr. Grayson and Mr. Martin. Where did you hear that? I was outside of Mr. Grayson's window. I was detecting the bank. Nice work, Billy. From now on, you're working for me. Don't tell anybody. Okay, Chief. It's a professional secret. I wonder if you'd be good enough to get me a report on these bonds, Mr. Grayson. Consolidated Gold Mining Corporation. Heard of it. It's a vile. That's why I brought them in. They were given me by Briggs, our chief driller. Briggs? Yeah. An excellent geologist, by the way. And uh, don't let this go any further, but he has just confirmed what only Mr. Williams and myself know. We are due to bring in a big gusher any day. Gusher? Yeah. <laughs> There's no telling how big it's going to be, and he's begging to get in on the ground floor, and he's given us these bonds for a 10% interest. Hmm. I'll soon find out what they're worth. Get me a report on the Consolidated Gold Mining Corporation from the Wall Street Journal. Do you have a cigar? No, thanks. I understood that you weren't taking in any outside money on this first well. Well, we didn't intend to, but Briggs has done such a good job that we kind of thought we'd give him a chance to make a little extra money, you know, as a sort of a bonus for his services. Well, that's very generous of him. Oh, not at all. Well, as long as you're taking in other people, I might be interested in making a little investment myself. Hmm. Oh, no. As much as we would like to be associated with a man of your caliber, we couldn't think of it. Yes? Oh, all right. Those bonds are worthless. Why, that double-crosser, that chiseler. Give me Chesterville, 672. I can't understand why Briggs would want to cheat us. We thought he was always so loyal. Oh, hello. Harry, this is Mr. Hamilton. Fire breaks at once. Understand that? At once. Well, thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Grayson. I hate to tell my partner, he's such a trusting soul. Uh, uh, would you consider a $25,000 offer for a half interest in your oil well? Oh, well, hardly. Uh, just a moment. I might be willing to go higher. Well, how much higher? I'll double it, 50000 So. That's the man we want to see. Well, here I am. The boys have been watching your operations for some time. I've got to be going. I'll see you later. Wait a minute, Mr. Williams. We've got something to say to you. I'll get the box. We've been talking it over, and we decided to let you have it. Wait a minute, fellas. I, I didn't do anything. There. 
take a look at this. Is it real? The boys and I have raised forty thousand dollars, and we want to be taken in right now. You, uh... <laughs> you want to be taken in? I was just going to your office to make Mr. Hamilton accept it. But now that you're here, you take care of it, won't you? We won't take no for an answer. Will we, boys? No! no. Well, you insist. And in appreciation, we're going to make you honorary colonel in our post. That's swell, fellas. I always wanted to march in a parade. Thank you, Colonel Williams. Salute your Colonel. Right face. Left face. About face. Right face. Left face. About face. Right face. Left face. About face. Well, I put it over. You put it over. I put it over. What are you talking about? I just sold half interest to Grayson for fifty thousand dollars. And I just sold the soldiers half interest for forty thousand dollars. Oh, tell me that again. Well, I couldn't help it, J.D. They made me take their money. Here I hook Grayson to get us out of this jam. Then you queer it. Do you realize we haven't got an interest in our own well? I should have known you'd get your sticky fingers on that bonus money. Give that back to the boys. I can't. Why not? I can't. Well, someone had to pay those bills. Yes, and you have to start a phony oil well. Here's Grayson's money. Give it back to the boys, and we'll beat it before the patrol wagon backs up. Why the getaway? We can buy Grayson's half and let the boys keep their own share. What did you say? Here he comes. Oh, hiya, Colonel. We're sticking around here to let Gusher blows in. Yeah, I brought my umbrella. The deal we just made is off, boys. What? I'm sorry, fellas, but Mr. Hamilton says we can't take your money. Say, you can't do this to us. A deal's a deal. We don't want our money. We want oil. You've got to do it. Please, as a special favor for me. Here, give everybody back his share. Not on your life. You can't treat me that way. It ain't fair. Yeah, it ain't fair to try and do us out of our share of this well, either. I'm your colonel, and you've got to do as I say. Oh, very good, Colonel Williams. Yeah. Just a minute. Just stand You're right not going to do it. Now, now. Hamilton, you have got to do it. All right, boys. What are you doing? All right, boys. Salute your colonel. I'll have the court-martial for this. I'll call out the militia. That's what I'll do. Yeah, you can laugh if you want to, but I'll tell you. Well? Now, don't get sore. I couldn't help it. You couldn't help what? Did you give them the money? They wouldn't take it. Even when I tried martial law, they... they gave me another 10000 Where are you going? Hello. Oh, hello, Jerome. Would you mind putting this in your safe? Of course not. Shut up. Can I see you for just a moment, Louise? Yes, In private. Well, I just got fired. Mr. the wife. And we're wise to you, too. What do you mean? You can forget the act, Briggs. I found out that you were secretly trying to buy an interest in that oil well. And with worthless bonds at that. You're crazy. What do I want to buy in there for? We're down almost 2,000 feet and there's no oil. I've had enough of your lies. The best thing you can do oh, is to... Oh, pardon me, Mr. Grayson. I didn't know you were busy. Well, what is it? A consolidated gold mine bond. I've never seen one before. Jet Bowers wants to cash it in. Bring Jed Bowers in here. Yes, sir. Come on in, Jed. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Grace? Hello, Jed. Where did you get this bond? From my pal, Mr. Williams. It was a bargain, too. Well, you leave it here, and I'll find out what it's worth. I appreciate that, Mr. Grace. Good day. Sir. 
ever see one of these bonds before? No. We've been swindled. I told you those guys were phony. Well, they won't get away with this. Go out and get those fellows and bring them in here. With pleasure. Yes? Send him in. Well, oh, Briggs, why aren't you on the job? Sit down. <laughs> I'll take my head off instead. I haven't got time to stay, Mr. Grayson. I just dropped in to ask you a little favor. I'd like to buy back your half interest of the will. You got the money with you? Sure. There. There's your agreement. Thanks, Mr. Grayson. Just a moment, Mr. Williams. Didn't change your mind, did you? Recognize this? Looks familiar. What is it? Consolidated gold mine bond. Fancy that. We're on to your game, Mr. Williams. I'm going to call the police. Well, I guess I better be gone. You mean the chief of police? Hello. Chief, this is Mr. Grayson. About Hamilton and Williams. They're crooks. They've been selling consolidated gold mine bonds. Why, they must be the fellows who had to skip out of Oakland under the name of McAllister and Watson. I'll have the roads blocked. Pick up Hamilton and Williams immediately. The swindlers. Yes, sir. Come here, fellas. What's the matter? Hamilton and Williams are both crooks. They're wanted in Oakland on a swindling charge. You'll never see a penny of your money again. Well, boys, we've been gypped. There's no oil in that well. Those two fellows have been taking us for a ride, that's all. They won't get away with it. Come on, with me. I've been right. Right. Oh, Let's go get it. What's the rush? Don't ask questions. Let's get out of here. I thought you weren't going. That was a half hour ago. Come on, the police will be here any minute. Police? What have you been up to now? Police are wise to it. They got wind of the gold bonds. Where's my bag? Where's my hat? You're wearing it. Oh, yeah. What are we doing? We're making a getaway. That's right. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on. No, just thinking. Aren't you going to stay for your own party? A party? What are you talking about? Well, there's a mob out there, and I heard him say he was coming up for a necktie party. <laughs> necktie party. We're not as scared, are we, J.D.? Let's beat it. They found out there's no oil in the well. What's that? No oil? Well, mm. oh, that gusher is so close to the top, the derrick is floating. Why don't you tell them? That's just what I'll do. Maybe I better write him a letter. Oh, but you can't go away and leave me here all alone. You'll have plenty of company when the mob gets here. Come on, Curry, if you're coming. Oh, but I can't go without my baby. Where's my baby? number 405, attention all state cars, be on the lookout for a gray Auburn sport phaeton, license 3B1286, two confidence men wanted at Chesterville, that is all. going to lose any money. I left it with Louise to return to them. Poor Mrs. Heath. She'll have a tough time explaining to that mob. What have you been up to now? Nothing. Or, uh, you see, we had to have a share of our own oil well. Go on. You won't get mad now. Go on. So I 
took the money out of the safe and bought back Grayson's half interest. I might have known it. Well, we're going back. You're crazy. I'm not going to let Louise take the rap for us. Well, I'm going to get out of here. Sit down. You started this. Now you're going to see it through. This will save us 10 years. Mrs. Heath, we want to talk to you. You're the blame for this. You talked us into giving them our money. There's nothing to get excited about. Those men are perfectly honest. Oh, yeah? Then why did they skip out with our money? Mr. Hamilton told me he might have to leave town. Lucky for him, he left when he did. We want our dough. I have your money. Billy, get the cash box out of the safe. They left it with me. I don't believe it. Yeah, where is it? Then give it to him. That's exactly what I'm going to do. There it is, just as I told you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, believing such rumors. Oh. There, you see? We've been tricked. Mrs. Heath is in it, too. She's vice president of the company. Yeah, just a come on, that's all. Hey, well, on. Come on. Come on. I better stay here. I might hurt someone if I lose my temper. She's just trying to cover up for those swindlers. She's as guilty as they are. It's a lie. Mrs. Heath had nothing to do with it. All right, Laura, guy, come on, you, come on, you. Come on, you. You'll just be patient. I'll see to it that you get every penny back. Where? As soon as we hit oil. Help, please. Aren't there any cops in this town? J.D., what are they going to do, barbecue it? I'll say we'll barbecue you. Gentlemen. You're making a terrible mistake. Oh, no, we're not. You made the mistake when you came to Chesterville. <laughs> You're telling me. When we get through with you, no other swindlers will ever come near this town. Hello, Shelby. Why don't you ride a horse? Gertie, call me a policeman, quick. Oh. Uh, You're a policeman. Is that quick enough? It's okay with us. Jerome, oh. 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 I'm so happy. Wasn't it thrilling? Now, wait a minute, buddy. We want to have a talk with you two, Bert. What, again? Not too tight, officer. I got a wire up from the Oakland police. They've been looking for you. All right, Chief. We'll go quietly. They want to tell you that gold has been discovered in the consolidated mine. What happened? The gold bonds. I threw them away. Oh, 
Copley, don't take it so to heart. I'll love you just the same, even if you aren't a crook. Look, Snuffy. Nice doggy, Snuffy. Oh, Snuffy. Nice dog, Snuffy. Mommy's 